Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We begin today, Jeremiah chapter 27, beginning in verse number 1. The most relevant Old Testament prophecy, the most relevant for today, in my opinion. So up to date. So parallel to what we see going on in the world especially in the world of so-called Christianity, God's people. So you can study the book of Jeremiah from its beginning, which is a part of a, the fifth series going through the entire Bible, verse by verse. It has taken, thir <coughs> excuse me, it's taken 38 years to get this far. <clears throat> And the New Testament is done. So this series with the previous four are all archived at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. And that's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. So go there, choose, click, and listen. Study God's Word at your pace, at your convenience. Again, that's at thebibleversebyverse.com. And now, let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeremiah 27, verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make for yourselves bonds and yokes, and put them on your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of Am the Ammonites, the king of Tyre, the king of Sidon, by the hand of the messengers who come to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, king of Judah. And command them to say to their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus you shall say to your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are on the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. And now, I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beast of the field, I have also given him to serve him. So all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the time of his land comes and then many nations and great kings shall make him serve them. So Jeremiah <clears throat> is right back at it. Just about got himself killed for preaching the word. Got out of it in the nick of time. But here he goes again. And he talks about bonds. God told him to get bonds. Send them to the to the kings around him. They would be like shackles. Israel can try to beat back the power of Babylon if they want to. They can listen to their false prophets who are speaking contrary to the word of the Lord and the word that Jeremiah has spoken, therefore. And they can go after Jer Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they can say that they're not going to serve him because, after all, they're wonderful prophets in Israel said that they don't have to do that. They can say that all they want. They can think that all they want because their lying prophets told them that it was true. But the word of the Lord that was spoken through Jeremiah says that they are going to fail. God says that he will decide who the world's superpower will be and he has decided 
that it will be Babylon, at least for the time being. God said that Babylon will rule the world until he says it's time for her to be punished for all her terrible sins. And this will be the time of Nebuchadnezzar and his son and his grandson. And it will come to a screeching halt in the days of his grandson. And that's exactly the way it happened, according to the book of Daniel. Verse 8. <clears throat> and it shall be that the nation and kingdom which shall not serve Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, and which will not put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation I will punish, says the Lord, with the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your soothsayers, or your sorcerers who speak to you saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you to remove you far from your land, and I will drive you out, and you will perish. But the nations that bring their necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let them remain in their own land, says the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell in it. So God expects people to listen to <clears throat> and submit to and obey the authorities that he has established, established on the earth. That's a, man, that's a command actually across the board. And that authority in the time of Jeremiah just happened to be Babylon by God's sovereignty. Babylon is the authority that God has raised up to rule the world. So, to not surrender to the Babylonians and to listen to the false prophets who were saying that Israel didn't have to surrender to them. Oh, that sounded so good, just like the rest of their prophetic lies. Sounded so good. Tickled their ears. Oh, man. Felt so good. None of this negativity that Jeremiah spoke. And they're telling them, you don't have to submit to them. Oh, everything's just fine. Everything's going to be okay. Well, God says, if you don't do it, if you listen to your lying prophets who are saying that you don't have to surrender to them, just know you will be rebelling even more against God by not surrendering to God's servant, Babylon. And right now, Israel can't afford any more rebellion against God. They're already into it up to their ears. <clears throat> Verse 12. I also spoke to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence, as the Lord has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Therefore, do not listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie against you, or a lie to you, I should say. For I have not sent them, says the Lord, yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I may drive you out, that you may perish, you and the prophets who prophesy to you. They're all going to fall together. The prophets, the false prophets who prophesied lies in the name of God, who did not stick to the word of God, who made things up, who substituted the pure word of God for whatever trash they feel good trash, of course, that they prophesied, they will be punished along with the people who love to have it that way. And of course, the false prophets did what false teachers do today. 
what modern evangelical preachers do today, the vast, vast majority of them, preach an upbeat message. An upbeat message to sinners who are on the edge of damnation. And that's the last thing that they needed to hear. But, same thing is happening today, and God would warn people today as he did back then. Today, God says, don't listen to those feel-good preachers because they may make you feel good. Oh, they'll make you feel good all the way to hell. Don't listen to the preachers who are saying, God's not angry with you. Just like they should have never listened to the false prophets who said, God's not angry at you, Israel. Don't serve Babylon. God's not on Babylon's side. But you better listen to Jeremiah when he says that Babylon is the rod of punishment from God against you. Therefore, you better submit to him or it's going to get even worse than what you think. Don't listen to those false prophets and don't listen to the preachers today who say that God is not angry with you. God's not angry with you, you impenitent sinner. Actually, your sin isn't even a sin. That's why they don't use the word. It's just a dysfunction. Don't pay attention to people who talk about repentance. Don't do that. Only moral reprobates, ladies and gentlemen, want a cool church that teaches things like that instead of the pure word of God. Only moral reprobates who want to feel comfortable in their sin and in their lukewarmness want a cool church with a cool dude, Jesus. But people who are seeking God and who will ultimately end up in heaven are not looking for cool. They're looking for truth. And they're looking for mercy and forgiveness and repentance and salvation through Jesus Christ. And you know what? There's just no cool way to deliver that message so you go to a cool church you're not hearing that and you're playing a stupid game of religion and it's going to lead you straight to hell a true preacher will proclaim the word of god in its entirety in a straightforward authoritative way and hit the people right between the eyes with the truth of God's word. And that will humble them and cause them to fall on their faces and repent and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Then they will have the joy and the peace that they're looking for in this life. And then they will have heaven instead of hell in the next life. So you better thank God and pray for any Bible teacher who gives it out straight. That's the message that needed, that is needed today. And that is what Jeremiah preached back in his day. Jeremiah said, repent and be spared. And repent and submit to God's judgment, which is Babylon. And then at least it will go well with you in a situation that's not God's best. It'll go better than if you don't do it. And that, of course, was not a popular message. But it's the message that Jeremiah preached anyway because it came right from the lips of God himself. The truth of God's word is never popular when you're speaking to a bunch of moral reprobates or so-called lukewarm Christians. But you've got to preach it anyway for the sake of the small remnant who are out there in the midst of them who want that truth and would respond to it. And of course, you got to preach it and teach it anyway for the sake of God Almighty because he's the one who commands us to do it. Study all of God's word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. 
and that is found at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Choose click and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be. Pray for me and God's word. And please do it right now while you're thinking about it before you forget. Write a note, put it on the refrigerator door, put it on the bathroom mirror, put it on the dashboard of your car, put it anywhere you can possibly think to pray for me and God's word. And keep doing it, would you? And don't forget to study God's word with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com. I mean, that's where it all begins. Studying God's word. Getting to know Jesus better. That's the purpose of it. And when you take a break from studying with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com, you can go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Again, as the Lord may lead. And that makes you a big part of this ministry as well. So I thank you for that and your prayers, and for studying with me. Until next time, so long.